Greetings, Earthlings. Here's a microview. So today I'm reviewing this guy, the Behringer C3 XLR multi-pattern condenser microphone. If you are interested in this mic, it'll set you back around 70 bucks on Amazon as per usual, link in the description. And for this video, I have the mic connected directly to the 2i2 second gen with phantom power on and my gain at around 60%. I will do no post-processing, but may boost the audio in post, so check the doobly-doo for that information. Now let's go ahead and talk about what comes in the box. Everything comes in this really nice plastic carrying case. Obviously, you get the microphone. You get the pre-attached microphone mount. You get a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter. You get some documentation, and you don't get a sticker. Behringer, seriously, what gives? As far as... <laughs> <laughs> as far as the build quality, this thing feels just fine. It has an all metal body and a metal mesh grill with a little bit of weight to it. On the front, you're going to find a light to indicate when it's plugged in and getting phantom power. Then you'll find two switches, the first one being a high pass or low cut filter. And then you'll also find a negative 10 decibel pad in case you're recording loud sound sources. On the back, you're going to find the polar pattern selection switch, which has three separate modes. Cardioid will be in the middle, which will mainly pick up audio in front of the microphone. Figure 8 will be the left setting, and that will pick up audio in the front and the rear of the microphone. And then the right option is omnidirectional, and that will pick up audio all the way around the microphone. As far as specs, this thing has a cardioid, figure eight, and omnidirectional polar pattern, a frequency response of 40 hertz to 18 kilohertz, a sensitivity of negative 40 decibels, a max SPL of 142 decibels, an impedance of 350 ohms, and a phantom power requirement of 48 volts. Throughout this review, I've had the microphone set to flat mode and this is how it has sounded. And now I've initiated the low cut or high pass filter to roll off the lower frequencies. And this is how the audio sounds. Back on flat mode and this is what it sounds like. And now I've initialized the negative 10 decibel pad. Currently I'm on the cardioid setting, which mainly picks up audio in the front of the microphone. This would be ideal if you're the only person talking into the microphone or if you're at all concerned with background noise. Now I am on the bi-directional setting, which picks up audio in the front and in the back of the microphone. And this setting would be good if you're interviewing somebody across a table. That way you get your voice as well as their voice or anything like that. Now I'm on the omnidirectional setting, which would be ideal if you're recording a full conference room or you need to record a bunch of sounds all the way around the microphone, but I personally don't see many use cases for it. Now I'm on the cardioid setting, spinning around the microphone to see what the actual polar pattern is and how the audio changes as we move around the microphone. And now I'm on the figure eight pattern to see what the actual polar pattern is, where the dead spots are, and how the audio changes as we move around the microphone's capsule. Now I'm on the omnidirectional setting and surprise, surprise, it's picking up audio all the way around the microphone as it should. And now for all you elite gamers out there, I'm banging on a keyboard with Cherry MX Blues directly behind the microphone on the cardioid setting because if you're at all concerned with background noise, you sure as hell better be using the cardioid setting. About one foot away from the microphone. About two feet away from the microphone and four feet away from the microphone. I'm at a loss for words. I don't know what to say. So for 70 bucks, you're certainly getting a lot of features on this microphone and all of those features are perfectly mediocre. 
In terms of pros, this thing is relatively cheap. It has a lot of versatility with the multiple polar patterns, the low cut, the pad, and everything like that. It has a pretty decent build quality, and it comes with a really nice carrying case. And then in terms of cons, because this is $70, it's hard for me to fault it for much, but if I did have to pick something, it does seem to be rather weak in the lower frequencies. So when it comes down to it, if you're on a super tight budget, you're looking for an XLR multi-pattern microphone, then sure, I guess I would recommend this thing. But with that being said, I'm only recommending this if you're actually going to be using all the polar patterns on this microphone. If you're not gonna be using all of them, I'd suggest going out and looking for a single use microphone that focuses on accomplishing one thing really well, rather than three or four things just decently. All right, guys, I guess that'll do it for today. If you found this video fun or interesting or helpful, thumbs up. If you thought it sucked, thumbs down. If you want to influence the gear that I review next, head over to geeksrising.com slash podcastage and cast your votes there. If you want more videos, click the logo. Check out the Discord server link in the description, and I will see you all on Friday. Thanks for watching. Bye.